Hey there, this is Pat Ennis of Ennis Legacy Partners. Welcome to the Exit Readiness Podcast. Uh, Corby McGordon, my business partner here, is uh, <clears throat> is with me here today, standing in for co-host Walter Dial, who is who is out on vacation. Our mission here on the podcast is to provide you, the business owner, with subject matter expertise on topics pertaining to building transferable or sellable business value, and then planning for your eventual exit from the business. We want to help you build a business that's transferable and then exit successfully on your own terms and conditions. When we bring on a new client, one of the first actions uh, that we take is estimating the value of the business. What is the current fair market value of the business? We've talked about this many times. If you've listened to us in the past, we've, we talk about it a lot and how important that is to your overall uh, planning effort, exit planning effort. <laughs> and in that process, we consistently find that companies realizing consistency and strong financial performance are those that have invested smartly in attracting people, but then also in developing those people. They get the right people on the, on the bus, they get in the right roles, and then they invest intentionally in developing uh, those folks. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so, in doing that, they're also being intentional and in setting a tone of continual learning and improvement as a key part of their culture. Their employees end up being more motivated and, and empowered, which is important, uh, both of which result in higher levels of productivity, efficiency, and hence profits, financial performance, value of the business goes up, and on and on and on. So employee development is key to increasing the value and sellability of a business, and 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 uh, and 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 because that's foundational to a successful exit plan, it's also employee development is also key for your eventual exit. And so that's the topic for today. Today's conversation: How can employee development result in a sellable business and a successful exit? And our guests, we're excited to have with us today, Catherine Allen and, and Ed Ofterdinger. Catherine and Ed are co-founders of AO People Partners, which is a leadership development and people strategies consulting firm here in the Washington, D.C. area. And they've recently co-authored and published their, uh, um, their book, Conscious, Capable, and Ready to Contribute, a fable, written in fable form. Subtitle, How Employee Development Can Become the Highest Form of Social Contribution. And uh, so it's the content of their book today that's going to be central to our discussion. And uh, Catherine, a little bit more about Catherine, former president of Allen Impact Group, senior organizational development practitioner and executive coach for SR, SRA International. She's a director of the Wisdom Foundation. And then Ed, co-founder of Conscious Capitalism here in D.C., former executive managing partner of national accounting and advisory firm, Baker Tillis, and uh, former CEO and managing partner of Beers and Cutler when, once they merged with, with Baker and Tillis in, in 2009. He's been named in the past as one of the Washington Business Journal's 100 most influential business leaders here, as well as uh, philanthropy CEO of the year. He's also, and this, this is something I'm particularly excited about, He's also a competitive amateur golfer at the local and national level and has been since age 10. So that's kind of cool. I think it's very cool. Uh, so Catherine, Ed, welcome to the podcast. Great, Great to be here. Yeah, so let's get started, please. And giving us the two minute download on your book uh, that I recently read and, and very much enjoyed it and why you both teamed up to write it. Well, I'm going to take that one. And so thanks for uh, that uh, lovely introduction. It's, uh, um, I've been busy, apparently. It sounds like. Yeah, uh, apparently you have. <laughs> but, um, you know, we could talk off on another podcast. Uh, so here's the deal. Catherine and I uh, were, we, we came together. I, I, truthfully, our spouses have been friends since high school. And so we vacationed together. We got to know each other. I was always listening to Catherine because you know, she's very adept at organizational development. She was a coach. I got out of Baker Tilly. I had a coach for 20 years. I wanted to be a coach. So 
we started AO about five and a half years ago. And in the early days, you know, we were doing a lot of brainstorming and visioning. And one day we we're sitting on the back porch of Donna and my house in Bethesda. And, you know, we just got talking about professional development, what worked and what didn't work. And Catherine asked a few questions, which really led to the core message of the book. Um, what we like to think of and call our big idea. So here's the core message. It's number one for leaders, developing your people. You said this very well in the intro. I was like, okay, we're done. He said everything I want to say, but not quite. Um, you know, developing your people's capabilities. And we think of that in a very holistic way. And we'll talk more about that later. Catherine will talk about it. But that is what will ensure your business thrives. I've known that, you know that, you said it so well. So that's not really a new thought, but it is foundational. Secondarily, and this has been my experience personally and then you know, in dealing with the companies that I worked at, it's obviously a gift to your employees as well because whether they stay at your organization or not, and by the way, here's a hint, you invest in them, they'll stay longer. <laughs> and we'll talk more about that later as to the value. But if they don't, you re they remember you, they become brand ambassadors. It's, it's just good for them. So if you take those two things, which are not new ideas, and you get to the third one, which was Catherine's big idea, which is, huh, that may just be the thing that does the most good for society. Because if you think about it, building jobs, being better citizens, going, you know, parents, <laughs> spouses, the whole deal. So that's kind of the premise behind what we call, you know, the employee development being the highest form of social contribution. So we had this big idea and we, we knew we were gonna embed it in the work we do, which we do, but we also wanted to get it out there. And Catherine knew that I'd been sort of writing my whole life and kind of had an idea of being a novelist and I have actually worked on a novel since this one. Um, but we, and we love business books, we, we're kind of avid readers. And so um, we thought, huh, so Catherine said, what about a fable? You know, we're all fans of five dysfunctions. Some of them are really good, some of them not so much, but five dysfunctions is one that we all go back to. I mean, it keeps showing up on the you know, top 10 list 15 years after uh, it was published. So our book has two, two parts. There is the fiction, 150, 60 pages at the front, and then a really kind of blueprint, a how-to at the back. Um, so what's the story about, what's the premise? It's about a leader in a company that, you know, they're in trouble. You know, um, I would say Andrew High, the guy, the, the, the character we created is, you know, I mean, he's a good guy with a good company, but he kind of lost his way a bit. And that was before things got bad. <laughs> and then it got really bad. So Andrew and Pat Carter, his partner, have this company, Shift Advisors. I mean, people are leaving in droves. Um, you know, there's a competitor stealing clients and the people... I mean, his principal and financial investor that he brought in for growth is talking about bailing on him. His board chair has to resign. His partners are angry. His wife is tired of his self-absorption. I mean, he's having a bad week. I mean, any way you cut it, he's got a lot on his, on, on his page. And you've read it, so I'm not going to reveal how, um, you know, how things turn out. But I think you know, hopefully you enjoy the twists and turns. But mm -hmm. What happens eventually, and this gets to the punchline, is that things start to change for the company when he reimagines and then rolls out this idea for a different higher purpose, which is that, huh, development is going to really help the company. And he had to prove that to his partners. <laughs> but it was also may just be that thing that is the, the best thing for society. So you can just imagine the financial investors reaction to that. <laughs> But, you know, along the way, they lean into it. They lean into their own development, which is so important. They bring in a coach. It's kind of uh, one part Yoda and one part you know, Bill Campbell, the trillion dollar coach. They go through COVID-19. So this is kind of the 2021 timeframe, social unrest, political turmoil. But at the end of it, they end up with a company that has that conscious development culture. Um, so you can tell probably from my excitement, I, uh, I really enjoyed it, writing the process. You asked us that over lunch. It was like, yeah, it's a lot of work. But we had fun with it. And Catherine did a remarkable job with what I think is the hard part, which was taking you know, the ideas we had and boiling them down into something that was a real blueprint. So um, yeah, so that's that's kind of, I don't know if that was a two-minute download, but, it's, but close yeah. enough. That's what it's all about. Yeah, so I did enjoy reading the book. And um, you know, some of my impressions, uh, 
First off, yeah, I enjoy the fable form that Lencioni probably made famous with five dis dysfunctions and his other books. So I've really enjoyed, it's an easy read. It's easy to get through, but it's impactful at the same time, just like just like some of his books. And, um, and two, you know, as I mentioned in the opening comments, employee development is so key. And, and of course that's foundational to your book, but also we're big on values-based leadership when it mm -hmm. comes to all as aspects of building a successful, healthy, strong business. And your proposition here in the book for employment de employee development is very much rooted in values-based leadership. So there's that piece of it too. And then um, I also appreciate how you're stretching us some with your thought leadership mm -hmm. and um, in proposing that employee development include what you refer to as mind skills and people skills with goals of individual growth that get, can lead to business growth, of course, but then as well as social contribution and that higher purpose that you just mentioned a few minutes ago, uh -huh. Ed, which so many people are concerned about today. And, um, and so I see all of that as taking employee in e development, if you will, to the next level for business owners, which is going to be needed in the years ahead. And two, I like your blueprint, uh, how to stuff that you put in the back. So someone could actually buy the book and read it and have a blueprint as to how to get started if they want to. In fact, to. we so encourage Those are my impressions of the book. And um, it, 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 was there a response to that? Yeah, I said, we, in fact, we encourage they buy it. So no, that's a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly, clearly, I, I guess I just promoted it for you yeah, too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. So I think you nailed it. I think Catherine will speak to it very, very nicely. I'll just say one thing, which is, um, if not now, when? I mean, people are, you know, the, the generations are, are looking for companies that are purpose-driven. And what, what mm. I know, because I mean, I, look, I'm fundamentally a business person, is I know that it also will increase enterprise value and will increase profits. And yes. anyway, we'll get into that a little bit more later, perhaps. But yeah, you, you, I think you nailed it. It's, um, it, it, if not now, when? Yeah, so our, our listeners, they're interested in increasing that enterprise value for sure in those profits. And, you know, some of the larger corporations, of course, they're a little bit ahead of us and, and our listeners in, in this whole area of, of um, conscious employee development. But it, it the small business owners really need to get a hold of this and, and understand it because their employees are more and more wanting it. Uh, so why do you think, first question, why do you think, or maybe it's a second, I don't know. Why do you think that the theme of conscious people development in the workplace is particularly relevant and timely? I think that's important, relevant and timely for business owners and, le and leaders right now. I'll, I'll take that. So um, there are a couple of ways to look at that. Um, there's a very practical aspect of what business owners and leaders, um, particularly those who create their own business, um, is that, and, you know, we work with a lot of founder-owned businesses, business leaders, um, uh, small to medium-sized companies in particular, and we find them at a point where they are either, they're trying to take their business to the next level of growth, mm -hmm. and they're asking themselves, do we have the right leaders in place? Right. right to actually take ourselves to that next level mm -hmm. and what you know got us to one point in our our company's growth isn't necessarily the kind of leadership that is required to take us to that next mm -hmm. level so the question is do we have the the leaders with the right skills to actually make changes that take us to that next level. So we often find leaders there at that stage asking those questions. They're also asking the question of how do we develop the next generation of leaders in our company? Because they are looking forward and realizing that particularly now where you have a lot of uh, company leaders 
founder leaders that are looking at their exit, they're looking at their retirement. And so how do we develop that next level leader? They've been very busy growing the company and realizing that leadership actually is a thing and you have to be able to encourage it and grow it, right? We can't always hire our way to the right level of, of leadership. We have to develop it, right? And so that's, a, that's an issue of how do we actually develop the people that we have? And then thirdly, um, what are the skills that our leaders actually need? What are they? And how do they relate to the business objectives we have? And, and so that's really our sweet spot of what we, all, that's where we meet our clients. Those are their needs. And so um, that's one aspect. The other aspect, the reason why development is so relevant today for business um, and employees is because the way in which we operate today in the business world is faster, it's more complex, and it requires a degree of, of human ability that operates at just higher levels. We have to pivot faster. Mm -hmm. We have to get our heads around change faster. We have to work with people who are different from us more than ever before. All of these things actually require our human abilities to operate. So that's our cognitive intelligence. It's our social intelligence and it's our emotional intelligence. And so um, our needs to grow who we are in addition to our technical skills has never been more necessary in order to keep pace um, with the speed of change and what is required of us. And that's a developmental process. Mm -hmm the developmental need. And so that's why companies that are really thinking about development of their people from a strategic standpoint and as a way to grow the ability and the potential of a company, these are the companies that are, are really going to be able to uh, weather change um, and also contribute, um, enable their employees to grow themselves. What do employees employees know they're going to have to continuously grow and they particularly the younger they are the more they expect companies to help them grow in their careers grow their abilities and they are they are recognizing more than ever that it's not just technical skills they need but those crucial crucial human skills right mm -hmm. and so when we think about the needs we also get very practical on what are the realities. It's great to say development's important, but how do we actually do it and do it in a way that's um, practical, sustainable, effective, meaning it produces results consistently and it's cost efficient, all right? Because we have to grow everyone, not just high potentials. And so we've really focused on uh, creating practices and supporting leaders to what we call own, model, and drive the development agenda in the people that really drives and fuels the business uh, impact. Um, and we believe there needs there is an opportunity for social impact, and we can talk about that sooner. So um, that's uh, not a quick answer, but um, that's where we'll start. Good answer. That's a good answer. Yeah. Yeah, do you find that, guys that people that you've mentioned in your book that, that leaders tend to outsource development to HR and and that I don't even know if it's if if it's a disconnect I don't know that it was ever connected in many leaders minds. It's a great uh really great question Corby. Uh, we've historically we've thought about developing skills. And, and oftentimes it's been just the, the technical skills, but now even leadership skills is a, it's an event. You send people away and they have their experience or, or now they can, you know, uh, take advantage of, of uh, technology for learning and growth. Um, but what we now understand having studied the way we learn and grow as, as, as adults and in the workplace is that particularly those human skills. So the ability to communicate, to listen well, the self-awareness you need to be able to work well with others, the way we think about uh, minds, uh, growth mindset, um, critical thinking, um, organizing and decision-making, all of these human skills, they, they need to, they actually are learned in the process of doing real work. 
Mm -hmm. They're learned with other people. Mm -hmm. And so we, we have to, we have to change the way we think about how it gets done. And so it's not so much, uh, you know, just turning it over to HR to make sure it happens. It's something that the senior most leaders have to really appreciate the relationship to, to the strategy, their business strategy, yeah, right? Sure. And, and so that's that's bringing it into the fold of a business strategy makes it more relevant, right? And not just something we do as a benefit for employees um, that's very voluntary. Um, we know that it's most effective when companies embrace the, the strategic business need and then really align it with their business strategy. So knowing what those core skills are that make them most successful with their customers and then how to consciously develop those things and really have more of an expectation rather than an invitation for development. Yeah, that's if I could add that. Go ahead, Corby, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to, I was going to say that, that that's a great segue into actually, as you do that, could you touch on the five approaches that you define in the book? Because I think they're very helpful as a framework to highlight what Catherine just said. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah go Catherine, ahead. Let, let me just bridge the little scene to that and then you can run with it. <clears throat> so as you know, I mean, one of the things that made it work in the book in Sh at Shift Advisors, the thing in my view <laughs> that made it work was that Andrew, the CEO and co-founder said, this is important. We're gonna do it. And it reminded me a little bit of Beers and Cutler, to be honest, where we had our, in our mission statement, which published everywhere was two things. We were gonna deliver excellence and develop leaders. So when the partners and the CEO say, that's what we're about, then you, because your question was, do we, do you see it outsourced to HR? You can't do it without HR, but where it really works is when the, C the CEO <laughs> says, I'm in. And our practice, and then Catherine, rev up your engine for the five things, our practice is 100% focused on getting to the C-suite. Because we know that if, we, if building coming, coming up from middle management is really hard to do. So, but if you can hook them, get them excited at the top, that's when everything happens. It's true in this and it's true in all kinds of things, but it's really true in, uh, in, in development. And I, I think that's a, a point that shouldn't be you know, over, over, overlooked as we go into the five things. Yeah, very good, very good. So what we outline in, in our book as five approaches that really make development more of an integrated aspect of the company um, requires first that leaders understand their role. The senior most leaders understand their role. Mm -hmm. uh, the senior leaders are very busy running the business, right? And they may be years uh, since they had any development uh, of them, of them, you know, they went through any leadership development um, or they've just learned leadership on the job. But in an organizational environment, every employee looks to the senior most leaders for the permission structure, the, the cues around what's expected and how leaders show up. How do leaders operate in a particular company is, is something that is communicated uh, through thoughts, words, and deeds by the senior most leaders. And so if you want to have more of a development uh, culture in your business, then leaders at the most senior levels have to really understand uh, what they want to create with leadership and what they mean by leadership. And so uh, what we say, leaders have to own, model, and drive the development agenda. They need to have that lived experience so that they can model it in a way that people will trust and step into themselves. And then they have to continue to drive. So it, it we just know from years of research and, and lived practical experience that, that leadership development, the investment in it um, has so much more uh, uh, legs to it if it is really driven by leadership. So that's the first important place we start. Then we help leaders understand how to align their business strategy and their people development strategy. Okay. Um, we study done not too long ago that found that only 40 per, only 40 percent of businesses actually have aligned business strategy and people strategy. 
So that's 60% of companies that don't have a real connection between learning and development and how it supports the business. So we, so helping leaders really make that connection. Here are the skills that we are really important to making our business successful so that people know what they are so they can step into them very tangibly is very important. The next thing is defining um, the principles of the conscious development culture. What do you want to say to your employees about what we expect, how we are committed to you? When Ed said, we have, we, we know that um, we develop leaders. Well, that's a communication. We mm -hmm. also have to make leadership or in people development safe, psychologically safe. And so having some principles that are articulated that leaders can articulate, but everyone can understand becomes very important in anchoring um, the rules of the road. Um, then really defining what those core capabilities are is important. Uh, we just assume that you know you need good people skills, but what are they? Um, the crucial ones are the most important that that really relate to your business. And so we help leaders really articulate, think about well, what are the most important skills that are that make us successful with our clients or our customers? What's mm -hmm. most important? And then we help them focus on that so they can articulate them. People cannot just intuit what you expect. And they can't step into developing themselves if they don't have a sense of what's valued in the company, right? And then lastly, a very useful uh, tool that every single business has is the employee life cycle. Embedding messages and practices around development in every aspect of the way you attract, the way you hire, the way you onboard, how you go about developing, um, retention, reward, all of that in the employee life cycle, your employer brand, um, mm -hmm. leveraging the messages you want to say about development and your commitment to development and how we go about doing this, using that life cycle is very, very helpful. And so um, these are all uh, approaches that, that every business, um, if they take the time to invest in from starting from this top um, can can really go a long way to helping it become more of a uh, natural way of uh, working, learning as you're working. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm kind of smirking because you know what goes through my mind is that that people are actually doing what they say. Oh, people are my most important asset, but they're aligning people goals with strategy seems to be a very well I haven't had a lot of conversations about that put it that way when we talk strategy so yeah, yeah. do you find it um, go ahead, Pat. um I have a question about soft skills you guys mentioned <laughs> soft skills in your in your book and actually even redefine them uh, you make a distinction um about different skills and employees need today in regards to soft skills and we're and we see the importance of that it's absolutely important in the work that we're doing but uh, going forward into the future it seems like soft skills and we think we actually call them hard skills because they're not, they're they're soft but they're hard uh and um you know as as some of the more hard skills if you will in the future get more and more commoditized and ai to away the soft skills are going to be, become more and more probably important and, and marketable. Uh, walk us through, it, it just, you know, you, you distinguish between different skills employees need today in regards to soft skills. Just walk us through those different categories, if you, if you would. Absolutely. Um, Pat, we like to say there's nothing soft about uh, people skills, right? Um, right? They can be hard. They can be hard to learn because they feel squishy as opposed to more technical skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the whole concept of soft skills and hard hard skills, the, the U.S. military had to kind of create that. They, they created that nomenclature um, uh, several decades ago so they could get their head around uh, the, the difference between the, the people-oriented skills and the more technical-oriented skills to operate equipment, et cetera. But the challenge with soft skills is that it's just a big bucket of every human skill that's not right. a technical skill. And again, it, 
getting your head around what are those skills is becomes really important when you're trying to devote resources and focus on the most important things. And so after thinking about this quite a bit and doing a, a lot of research, we took a crack at rethinking the, the, the buckets that we call these skills, right? We all need models and frameworks because it's how we organize our mind around things, around concepts. And what we realized is that the people skills actually um, come into two categories that are helpful to think about. The mind skills, this, the brain-based skills that uh, we use our, our brain for specifically, such as the executive functioning skills. So these are the brain-based skills that we use to, to organize ourselves, to manage our time, to make decisions, um, uh, uh, so decision-making, for example. Uh, growth mindset is an example of a brain-based skill critical thinking, um, even creative thinking, uh, curiosity, decision-making. These are all skills that we use our cognitive intelligence to, um, to apply our mind to doing things, right? And so knowing what those are, for example, critical thinking is a very important skill in business. Well, if 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 you want employees to engage more of the ability to question and to discern and and to challenge, you know, with a critical eye, they need to know that that's a valuable skill, and they they need to know something about it so that they can begin to step into it. Right? Then we've got what we call people skills. These are the the human. These are more of the um, the interpersonal skills that we need to work well with others, to know ourselves, and, and work well with others. So self-awareness, for example, is an aspect of emotional intelligence. It's one of the key skills that leaders need. And so that's, that comes, that's very important when it comes to managing yourself, self-control, mm -hmm. self-management, um, understanding other people's needs, that's compassion and empathy, all of that is an aspect of, of how you tap into your emotional intelligence. Um, authenticity, being yourself, kindness even, the ability to understand the role of kindness um, in the, the simplest of acts in the workplace makes a big difference. Balancing, balancing trade-offs, Communication skills are really important. That's listening, um, speaking, writing, uh, giving and receiving feedback, teamwork, influencing others, resolving conflict, leveraging differences in integrity. So we came up with, after lots of research, understanding what we would call crucial skills, right, um, in these buckets. And then tech technical skills. People have a better understanding of what technical skills are in general. These are the domain skills that come with an expertise. And we find that there's a lot more uh, available instruction that's very focused on that. We didn't spend time really unpacking that because we feel that lots of industries have done a very good job and it's very tangible. Where we spent time was really creating better ways to think about and approach the human skills um, that that we think of as mind skills and people skills and people skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, Excellent. And would you say all of those are uh, trainable, developable. They really are. <laughs> they are. And the reason they are is because they are things that we do in ways that we may not be aware of, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for example, we can get better at listening. If mm -hmm. we understand what good listening is, right? conceptually but also when we see other people doing it and we experience people and we experience people who are really listening well to us mm -hmm. it's a lived learning mm -hmm. right yeah. um empathy is yeah. also learnable because we when we experience and then you place the value of empathy so you begin to talk about why empathy is important um, between employees right to help each other right? That creates a way to work together. So that creates teamwork. So one of the most important things about learning any skill, 
regardless of what it is, is to have better clarity about what is the skill? What does it mean? And then in an organizational environment, it's important to know that the senior most leaders value that skill and why it's relevant to the business. Yeah. Because here's the hidden, the hidden good news is when people understand something is important and it's valued and it's expected to be in the process of learning, people mm. naturally step into it, right? They'll get better and better. And so that's the that's where we haven't really tapped into is how people get better in part because it's been expressed as a an important thing by a business. Hmm. Interesting. You you said in passing that it's expected. Hmm. How difficult is that to actually inculcate in a culture? Well, well this is, go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say one of earlier when Catherine was describing the life cycle what we've done with a number of clients and Catherine and Amanda and our team have done an amazing job on this is when you when you start to you, you embed these principles in really every aspect so expectations come from the top they're communicated and then they're rewarded or not so then if you build in a performance management a kind of a loop you'll see in our life cycle we kind of have an infinity sign because one of the things we noticed, Catherine really was the first one to really, huh, is that we have training development and performance management, and they're not oftentimes linked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the training people are off doing their thing, but over here, we're, we're valuing something different. So we really consciously help clients say, these are the ones we want. We're going to put it in. We're going to reward them. We're going to compensate, et cetera. So without that intentionality, it all is a little too murky. Um, so sorry to interrupt there, Catherine, but... No, I, I, that's very important. And this is why the very first strategy is, is leaders at the top understanding how important their role is, because employees will very quickly learn by observing what leaders value around skills. And mm. so you cannot credibly say you value these skills and expect you know, everyone to be developing them if if leaders are not personally committed to their own work. And I think that's that's uh, one of the, there's the most, leaders have much more influence than they necessarily appreciate just by modeling what they want to see. But it requires that they be in the commitment of that part, that work themselves. And, and, they can speak with much more effectiveness around what they expect when they can say they're committed and then they invite people to help them be committed, right? Mm. So the, the other thing I would say is that we approach um, learning and development in organizations as kind of an invitation. If you want to take this course, you can take this course. If you want to grow mm -hmm. this way in, in your career, you know, it's up to you. And, and that's, that's, go that's good. I'm not making that bad. But right. you're in an organization and employees need clarity around what's expected. But they also need to feel safe that they're trying to grow and develop and they're not always getting it right. And so it's it's important that organizations be clear around what they expect and create the safe learning environment that makes mistakes um, okay as long as you're learning and growing. The thing about learning as humans in the workplace is that when you develop the muscle to learn and it feels expected and safe, then people can learn to change more quickly. Yes. And that's key to speed. Huge. Yeah. So in my opening comments, I mentioned um, in, in regard to my impressions of the book and reading the book, one of them was where and how we're big on values-based leadership and where we're, we're what you're putting forth in the book absolutely intersects with values-based leadership. And you just described that, really. Uh, we're right now, uh, to give you an example, we're coaching a successor of a family business, a, a young man who's going to be taking over the family business. And one of the things that's impressed us as uh, uh, with him and encouraged us in his um, potential 
for a successful owner in the past, in the future is he has this value and mm -hmm. he's modeling it, demonstrating it. He's committed to it and he wants to put it and, and make sure that it's anchored. I like that. We like that word anchored yeah. throughout the organization in, in, in the years ahead. Uh, so it does it absolutely. We can, we absolutely affirm your conviction that it starts with the leaders. Uh, because if it doesn't, then it's not going to, it's just not going to have the level of importance and gravitas that it needs to have in order for it to, to stick and last. Okay. So as we, <clears throat> there's been tremendous, of course, we knew it would be a lot of great information. As we wrap up here, is there any one last thing that either one of you would say as, as um, another piece of wisdom that we haven't covered um, before we wrap up? Ed, why don't you go first? Okay, I don't know if it's wisdom, and it, it, but I want to expand a little bit on the theme you you said along the way, Pat, and that's that there is data out the at your ears that says if you invest in your people, if you build these cultures, you will make more money, and you actually will raise the enterprise value. It's just, and it's interesting because you can find public companies. You can look at Conscious Capitalism, the book, or even uh, an everyone culture by Keegan and Lay, you find data is out there, but it is a long-term thing. Okay. So you, the sooner you start investing in it, the more your enterprise value will go up. And it occurred to me this morning, as I was thinking about what I would say today, that, that, yeah, we can find the big companies, you know, you can see their value go up. There's data. But what I also noticed was going back to my prior life, I thought about the clients I had, they were on the best place to work list and the clients I had that weren't. And I, I'm here to tell you, the ones that generally speaking that are at the top of those lists, they're worth more and they make more money. And so for, you know, the, it's not just about the big boys, like you said before, it actually works at all levels of business. And uh, so that would be the last thing I would say. Yeah, very good. Yep. What I would say is that we, we really think of learning and growing every day as a practice. And if you can, as a leader, if if you can just uh, appreciate that every day you get to start fresh and we you really want to look at learning and growing as a daily practice, because that gives you the grace to know that some days some days, you know, you're in, in good practice of something, but you get you get to start fresh the next day. And so um, seeing it as a practice is really important. Seeing it as a journey is very important. And just being committed to being in the practice yourself and just in the journey of creating this, because as Ed said, it's a long-term investment, but the payoff from employee engagement, commitment, but really importantly, we have the joy and the pleasure of seeing leaders whose lives have been changed because of what they learned about themselves that they take home to their families. Mm -hmm. they, they are different people. And there is a untapped joy that comes from knowing that your commitment and investment to developing your people to be better versions of themselves, not only serves the business, but mm -hmm. it actually is a contribution. And that is an untapped, you know, and story that we don't talk enough about. And so um, we just think the world's going to be, we think that business has a way to contribute uh, to people being better in all aspects of their lives. And that is valuable. And we need to recognize it and incentivize it. Um, and that's our vision is that people development in the workplace will become a recognized and incentivized form of social contribution um, in the 21st century. Excellent. That's a good vision. Yeah, if you, um, if you check out our website, nslp.com, you'll see a tagline there. Enjoy life in the business, plan for life after the business. And the enjoy life in the business has so much to do, listeners, with what we've talked about today, um, to Catherine's points there just a second ago, but then also 
just very practically in, in operating the business. Uh, if you've got well developed folks who are well engaged, you're going to enjoy life in the business much more. And you're your eventual exit is going to be much more successful as well. So again, Catherine, Ed, thank you for joining us. Other than your book, I think we've done a very good job of promoting your book today. Oh, and by the way, here it is. <laughs> here it is, <laughs> listeners, viewers, hopefully you're viewing. Um, other than the book, is there anything else that you'd like to promote as we're wrapping up? Well, you can you can always uh, find our book online at online booksellers uh, like Amazon or Barnes and Noble. You can we love having conversations with uh, leaders um, who are contemplating their the next chapter. We do a lot of that work, and so we really invite uh, leaders to be in conversation with us. Um, and uh, you can reach us uh, on our website at aopeoplepartners.com. Ed, anything else you want to add? Um, no, I think that, I mean, that covers it. We really appreciate it, uh, Pat and Corby. Um, yeah, uh, we, we, we love people. So, you know, reach out and we're happy to join the conversation um, and uh, start getting into the messy part of self-development, which we, we, we embrace and love. So thanks for the time. You're very welcome. Uh, listeners, really, if you want to enjoy life in the business and have a successful exit, you will absolutely invest in your people development. So, and two, if you want help in maximizing the value of your business, the sellability, and then planning for your exit, you can reach Walter, who's not here with us today, but but uh, you can reach him at 301-951-9090. You can reach Corby and myself at 301-859-0860. And if you've benefited from today's uh, episode, hopefully you have, please consider liking it and sharing it uh, on social media. We, we're grateful for that. So thank you for listening. And, and until next time on the Exit Readiness Podcast, this is Pat Ennis with Corby McGordon sitting in for Walter Dial, signing off. Thank you. Thank you.